Okay, time to do some mass and energy balances for evaporation. And I recommend you that you do this together with a friend. Uh, and there are three steps. First, write down mass balances for A, the steam side of the heat exchanger, and B, for the feed side of the heat exchanger. And secondly, write an energy balance for the total system. So uh, think of a system boundary like this. And then write down heat transfer equation, equation for the heat exchanger. Uh, the flows are S, K, F, L, and V in kilogram per hour. X is the weight fraction uh, non-volatile component. And then we have the enthalpies of the solution. Uh, we use here the large letter H for enthalpies of gases and uh, the low, small uh, letter H for uh, enthalpies of liquids and the index indicating which uh, flow that is. So you need to, to think of drawing this different system boundaries around these things, right? So pause here and try to do this for yourself. So the steam side is pretty simple. There is only one component there. So, uh, and we do these mass balances for a steady state. So there's no accumulation here. And so simply S equals K. What comes in as steam must come out as condensate. So no problems there. On the feed side, we have two components. We have the liquid and we have the solids. So on the liquid side, or uh, the liquids comes in as F and it comes out as the liquid L and part of it as evaporated to V. So F equals L plus V. What about uh, the non-volatile components? Well, if we can assume that the phase separator is perfect, then V contains no solids. So then it's simply F times XF equals L times XL. In a real evaporator, we might have to add here plus V times XV because there might be some entrainment. Some of the uh, small droplets of liquid might actually follow in Swedish medryckning. So entrainment. What about the energy balance? Well, uh, to the total system, we have the uh, flow F and the flow S coming in. And the flows going out are K, L, and V. And we need to multiply those with their respective enthalpies to get an enthalpy balance. So it looks like this. S, S times the enthalpy of that stream plus F times the enthalpy of that stream equals V times the enthalpy and so on. And now I've written already S times HK here rather than K uh, times HK K because, well, uh, the steam side mass balance is so simple so we can just ignore the K and say that, well, we set up the system such, um, the equipment such that we refuse to let any uncondensed steam out. So what comes out is the condensate period. Uh, we can shuffle this around. And uh, if we do like that, uh, to collect the SH, S's on one side, uh, we get S times the evaporation enthalpy, so HS minus HK. And that is the energy that the steam gives to the feed side, right? Perhaps I should point out here that we have actually assumed implicitly that we have no heat losses. So all the heat that the steam is giving away is taken up on the feed side. And that's this here. <coughs> For the heat transfer in the heat exchanger, we will introduce an apparent overall heat transfer coefficient. And what we have then is that the, the heat being transferred is K times the area of the heat exchanger times the temperature difference Ts minus T. Now we said earlier that this temperature difference Ts minus T is not exactly what happens, but it's fairly close. We know that we introduce some errors here when describing the temperature difference like this. But instead of focusing on that, let's take all that uncertainty and put that into the problem of, of saying what is the value of the apparent overall heat transfer coefficient. 
So you push all the uncertainty into this and make the K value here a bit tricky to estimate. But once you have a system up and running, you can calculate uh, your apparent overall heat transfer coefficient simply by measuring these temperatures. Or, uh, so the temperature of uh, the boiling liquid that comes out and the temperature, the condensation temperature of the steam. 